Hello Mustang family. I am so excited to be talking to you today about our upcoming school year and I can't wait till I can actually see all of you in person. We have really missed our students here at Magnet and we've been spending the entire summer making ways to figure out how to keep our kids the safest we possibly can. And I will tell you that all of our plans are in place and we're working hard and teachers have been going through it this whole week and we will continue to go through it to make sure everyone knows how to keep our students safe. Before we start our formal presentation, there are a couple things I need to let you know. Number one, every student at Magnet should have received a letter from their homeroom teacher. In this letter, there is a letter from the homeroom teacher, a letter from the administration that explains soft start week and tells you which day your student comes next week to school, and the remind codes for all the teachers. We also included a copy of our Strong Start plan, which details a lot of the things we are doing to keep students safe. I will be going over all of this information in this presentation, but I wanted to make sure you knew that if you have not received a letter yet, my own son has not received his, that you need to contact the school so we can get that information to you since we are starting Soft Start next week. So if you've not received your letters for your child or children, please let the school know so that we can get that information to you. Well, before we get much further with this, I also want to reiterate that we do have a couple of things we need parents to do. It's very important that you sign up for Remind. I understand that not all of you have received the Remind codes because you didn't get a letter. However, at the end of this presentation, there is going to be a link to our teacher open houses and each teacher has created a video for you to explain what their classroom looks like. They've worked very hard on this, and I'm very proud of them for all of the things they've accomplished this week in this short amount of time. So in this video, they'll tell you about their classroom, but their Remind Code links will also be in their classroom so that you can join as soon as you watch the presentation. So please make sure if you are a virtual student that you get the Remind Code done as soon as possible. This is because virtual students must sign up for a time to come Wednesday. We do not want any of your students coming with another student. And we do not want the parents, a big group of parents coming in. So we are going to sign up for a time for your virtual school orientation. At this orientation, the students will receive all their materials, their workbooks, their supplies. If you paid a supply fee, they will receive their iPad. Students cannot be in the virtual school without the iPad. So it's very important that you sign up for a time. Homeroom teachers sent out the Remind today. And in Remind, there's a Sign Up Genius link. Simply click the link and fill out your information for the time you want to come. Please plan on being here at least 30 to 45 minutes. In this very important meeting, teachers will not only have you sign the documentation to get the iPad, but they're also going to take the time to help you set the iPad up and show you what Google Classroom looks like and how to get to the important information you're going to need to know as a virtual parent. We are very excited to be supporting our parents in this endeavor and we're very excited to help you get started. So please make sure you sign up for this time. Now we will go through some of the things on Strong Start and some of these things will be mentioned again, but I did want to reiterate the importance of signing up for Remind, whether you're virtual or face-to-face, -face, and making sure you know what day your child comes for Soft Start. So let's go ahead and get started with this presentation so that you can be informed of the things you need to know for this school year. First, students will enter either at the bus or car line, and there will be a, their temperature will be taken by a thermal camera. There will be a duty teacher at both places, they will have hand sanitizer for the students as they come in, and any student who reads with a temperature of 100.4 or greater will be asked to stand aside, and we will check their temperature after a few minutes to make sure that they indeed do have a fever. If students do have a fever, they will go to the office, and Ms. Wright will check their temperature one more time, and then she will contact the parents to pick the students up. It is very important, parents, that if you are called with your child having a fever, that you get your child picked up as soon as possible. This way, we can stop the spread of anything that might be going around, whether it be COVID, strep, flu, all those fun things that we get at school. We want to make sure that we are definitely doing our part with removing students from campus that do have a fever. 
So we're asking for your support in that, and I know it's difficult, but you guys are very, very important in making sure that we keep our kids safe. Students will go to their homeroom hallways and sit at least six feet apart with their masks on until 720. We have social distancing circles on the floor for the students to sit on so that they can be six feet apart at all times. They will wear their mask at all times. Sixth graders will go to the gym instead of the junior high hallway to reduce the number of kids on the junior high hallway. We are asking that if your student is a car rider and it's at all possible, please do not bring your students until 720. This will reduce the number of kids in the hallways and will help us with our risk factors. Teachers will be arriving by 720 and students will go into their homeroom classes at that time. Breakfast will be delivered to each homeroom at 730. And morning announcements and celebrations will occur at 740 via the intercom system instead of meeting in the gym like we've done in previous years. Face-to-face -face classes are evenly balanced per grade level so both classes are the smallest possible. Currently, the largest class is 17 students face-to-face. -face. While we do know this can change and fluctuate, we want you to understand that we have taken your child's safety as the number one priority in this school year. Desks are in rows and not in table groups. All tables have been removed from classrooms. There are floor stickers six feet apart throughout the building hallways to help with distancing and transit. In fact, we even took our teachers on our tour of the building yesterday to show them the sanitation measures, the cafeteria, the gym, but also to practice walking in a line six feet apart. And guys, it's hard. So the soft start week is very important because we will be training our students in these procedures. They will walk six feet apart. And then that way, when everyone's back on September 8th, we will know what to do. So we are practicing that and we will continue to practice that. Students will always be wearing masks, especially in the hallways and in transit. Uh, there will be places in classrooms for students who have to blow their nose or, or having some difficulty that they can move their mask for just a moment. But they will be at a minimum of six feet away from other people. In many cases, they will be eight to ten feet away. There will be no large meetings in school this year. This includes pep rallies, club meetings, and athletic events. Students will stay in static home rooms and the teachers will move from class change to minimize student groups coming into contact. So your child's homeroom will be their home all day. They won't be moving and mixing with other classes. In grades one through four, elective teachers will come to the classrooms. In grades five through eight, students will go to electives. However, we have added five minutes of transition time between each class so that elective teachers can effectively sanitize each chair, desk, music stand, doorknob, anything the students will come in contact and touch, the teachers will be sanitizing between groups of students. The lunchroom in the gym will also be partitioned so that no more than 25 students will be in a section. These same partitions can be moved to the hallway for dismissal so that we have no more than 25 students sitting in a section for dismissal, which we will talk about a little later. Another important part of what goes on at this school and what we've done to prepare for COVID and the school year is Title I. Title I is a federal program that provides funding to schools that serve an area with high poverty. The funding is meant to help students who are at risk of fail, falling behind academically. The funding provides supplemental instruction for students who are economically disadvantaged or at risk of failing to meet state standards. Title I has provided funding for us to increase sanitation and safety within the school. The following things have been purchased for this purpose. Sanitizer spray to be used in the classrooms, in the hallways, and in the cafeteria. Sanitizer scrubber to be used after the students leave each day. Cleaning towels to sanitize the classroom, detergent for washing cleaning towels, water bottle fillers, hand sanitizer stations and refills, and thermal cameras at each entrance. In addition to the cleaning supplies, we use Title I funds to purchase instructional supplies. Math workbooks have been purchased for all students and will be going home for our virtual students at the orientation meeting. Reading workbooks for the second grade curriculum, iPads, keyboards, chargers, a stylus for each student. Student subscriptions to the following programs have been purchased with Title I. LearnZillion, our Zern School account, and Scholastic News. 
Lastly, we use this to purchase computers and other things we need within the school. So let's talk about some of this sanitation. Shared equipment and supplies will not be used in any class. This includes PE and playground equipment. We are going to be a little challenged at recess on figuring out things that our kids can do where they don't come in contact, but our teachers are working hard at it and already have some great ideas. Water bottle fillers will replace water fountains, and students may bring refillable water bottles to school. Hand sanitizer stations are placed throughout the school and checked multiple times a day. Currently, we have 10 of these hand sanitizer stations, but we plan on doubling that amount um, in the next few weeks. Teachers will have hand sanitizer bottles in their classrooms as well as sanitation spray bottles. Desks and doorknobs will be sanitized by the teacher throughout the day. Custodians will do hourly sanitations of bathrooms and they will sanitize between groups of students according to a bathroom schedule that the teachers have collaborated and established together. Time has been added in the master schedule for scheduled bathroom and sanitation times. Students will wash their hands at least every two hours. No two groups will be in the bathroom at the same time. So let's talk about visitors to campus because we usually have a lot of visitors to campus. We are limiting visitors to campus this year in order to keep our students safe and to follow along with the CDC guidelines. So parents are asked to walk their students to class for the start, soft start day only. We will have important documents for you to sign so that your child can receive an iPad. It's also important to remember that when you visit for this day, you must have your mask and your temperature will be taken just like the students. Parents must schedule a meeting with me to discuss any issues or problems. We can't just walk in if something's happened, please send me an email or call Ms. Wright and we'll get a time scheduled for you. We do want to minimize the number of people in the building at any one time, which includes our front office. For students who have left things at home, which this happens a lot, I'll be honest, we will have a box outside for you to put their belongings in and you can notify us through the doorbell that you have dropped something off for your child. Approved visitors, of course, we said this, but you can never say it too many times. You must have a face mask to enter the building. And after the first day, no parents will be allowed to go to the classrooms to visit. This is our normal procedure anyway, but I just wanted to reiterate the importance of it this year. Approved visitors must also have their temperature taken as they enter. And if for some reason you need to come unexpectedly, please call the office ahead of time at 318-357-1252. We love meeting with parents, we love working with parents, and we do very much feel like our parents are our best allies. But we do have to be cautious and safe. And we are trying to keep as few people in the office as possible. Let's talk about the spread. We are going to try to stop the spread as much as possible of germs in the school building. Students in grade 3 through 8 will mat wear masks throughout the day. Students in grades 1 and 2 are encouraged to wear a mask. If your child wears a mask and you want your child to wear a mask, we are going to enforce that and we're going to tell the child and remind the child to put it on. So we will support you in that first and second grade parents. If you want your child to come in a mask, we are definitely going to have your back with that. Student masks can be any color or design as long as it is not vulgar. If your kid likes dinosaurs, let them get a dinosaur mask. If your kid loves Lego, Lego mask. If they like mermaids, get a mermaid mask, whatever will help them to wear the mask and be comfortable in the mask, we want to have that. And it's kind of fun to see their personalities a little bit. All right, we're going to talk about face shields because a lot of people have asked about face shields. Face shields are not recommended by the CDC. They do not provide the same level of protection as a mask. However, if a student has a medical condition that is diagnosed that lets us know that there could be a risk of wearing a mask, they must talk to me. We can permit students to wear face shields under very limited special circumstances. And they must be approved prior to the first day of school. Face shields also must have cloth going all the way down to the neck. They can't just be the plastic. So if your child has a medical diagnosis and you are having them come face to face and you you think their diagnosis may allow them to wear a face shield, you must contact me before the first day so that we can make sure the diagnosis actually does allow for a face shield. 
Students will be able to eat lunch in the cafeteria in small groups with no more than two grade levels in the partition cafeteria at any time. There will not be more than 18 students in a section in the, in the cafeteria at a time. They will not sit across from one another and they will skip two seats between each child. Student groups will not be in the same location for recess and will go at staggered times. Recess has been increased to 20 minutes to accommodate the students moving less throughout the day. All faculty and staff will wear masks anytime they are not alone. They will wear them in the hallways and they will wear them in their classrooms unless there are no students or other adults present. Let's talk a little bit about dismissal because this has changed for this year. The first change we have is our dismissal time. Dismissal time is 3.15 and it is the same for every grade in the school. Buses are scheduled to come at a very steady rate so that the students can be called quickly to the buses from their classroom. This helps us not to hold kids and have them at any large area at any one time. Carline students will be in holding areas, but those holding areas will be partitioned off so that they can quickly get to the car line when their names are called. Each grade has their own holding area, and I'm not going to read that to you, but this will ensure that we are not putting more than 25 students in any one area at any time. We will partition halfway down the hall for first and second grade to ensure this. Students will wear a mask at all times while transitioning for dismissal. Let's talk about Carline. Carline dismissal, of course parents still need to have car tax to pick up a student. We are asking parents to please not line up until 3 o'clock. We are dismissing at 315, which is after the other schools, giving parents time to get their other kids and get to our school to pick up their kids. It is very important that we do not block the gate and that we do not block the neighborhood. And also, because we are dismissing at 315, our buses are coming from LP Vaughn and they're coming from the junior high. And when they do that, if we are all the way down the road, our buses can't get to our kids and our kids can't get off campus quickly and safely. So please help us in this. To make things easier for dismissal, we will use both lanes for dismissal and they are not grade specific this year. So the car line captain will have her walkie talkie and she will tell you which lane to go in, right or left and you will go into the lane that she asked you to go in and hopefully that will speed our line up and we'll be able to go at a steady pace. It is our goal to get kids off campus quickly, efficiently, and safely. On another note, the car line captain will not be wearing a mask as she calls names because you can't understand her on the walkie-talkie with a mask on. However, she will never come in contact with children. And if you have your car tag, there is no reason for her to ask you who you're picking up or what you need to do so she will not be coming into contact with any physical people. All of our car line teachers will have their mask on. They will escort the child to the car but they will not open their car door and they will not close their car door. Students will be opening and closing their own doors. We will begin loading cars at 315. Please make sure that you are here to pick up your child in a timely fashion but know that we're not going to start the car line any sooner than 315. Parents are highly encouraged during soft start week to bring their students to class on the first day. This is because we have some forms that have to be filled out from the technology department for your kid to get an iPad. And even if your kid is face to face, they still need an iPad. Our entire curriculum is on that iPad. And we did this so that all of our kids are getting the same access and the best instruction we can. And this is the best compromise we have between virtual and face-to-face. -face. So it's very important that all of our students get that information filled out so that they can get their iPad. You will also receive your car tags. And you will also be able to sign the agenda pages that we need signed. So you won't have a bunch of stuff coming home that day for you to do. Especially if you have four or five kids in school and you're trying to fill out all that stuff. We can get it taken care of first thing in the morning. You can go to work and they can go to class. It is also very important that you know that the students only come one day next week. Virtual students will get a remind notification with a Sign Up Genius link to sign up for a time to come on Wednesday. 
This was sent this morning in our professional development. We worked on this together as a faculty and staff and we sent these out at the same time. If you haven't signed up for Remind, you can't sign up for your time to come for orientation. So it is very important that you do that. Now talking about communication, I am a magnet parent. When we shut down in March, I got remind after remind after remind after remind after remind, and I know it's a lot. But it is important that you know what's going on at school. It is important that we keep those lines of communication open. So please sign up for the Remind app. You can set it to just get text only if you want to. But it's important that you sign up with the app. Students will receive materials for virtual learning and a schedule for their Google Meets on that soft start week, but you can't sign up for it if you don't have a mind. So please take care of that. Students may come to school on occasion if they're a virtual student for required screening and testing. And after three days of not logging into the classroom, families must be reported to truancy. So it is very important that your child logs into every class every day. And the teacher will show you how to do that at that virtual orientation. Guys, I know this was a ton of information and everything is different this year, but there are some things that are still the same. We still have the best faculty around, the greatest kids around, and the most supportive parents anyone could ever ask for. And those three things are going to make sure that we're successful in this school year. Another thing that I think is super cool is that we have designed open houses for every teacher. We have a very cute link, and if you click on the link, you're going to see our school and doorways for each teacher. If you click on the teacher door, it's going to take you to their page that has their remind codes, and it also has a video from each teacher explaining how their classroom is going to work and what they're going to do this year. I'm very excited about this. The teachers worked very hard yesterday to do this, and I'm very proud of them. So that information will be on our Facebook page um, in the comment section below this video. Um, and we will also try to repost it and make sure that you guys have access to it. Again, we are excited. We can't wait. We love our Mustangs and we are ready for school. I can't wait to see you guys. See you soon. Bye.